The market's going mental again. Even stocks that were 80% down are starting to see a bit of a rebound. But even though things are looking positive, there are still some risky stocks out there. Welcome back everybody, my name's Paul. If you've never seen me before, hi Dino. If you've never seen me before, I recently started investing here in the UK and I'm doing my best to figure out how it all works. Today I wanna to talk about value traps and how they apply in this recession. I'll go through a bit of news and have a look at my portfolio. So have a look at these timestamps if you just wanna skip ahead. First off, let's talk about the new updates that are finally coming to Trading212. Trading212 finally started talking about updates again on its community forum. These updates were supposed to be released mid-April. Trading212 says it's added even more upgrades to the package, which has meant that we're probably not even gonna see it till June now, but they are releasing two betas and one is already out. So now Trading212 has made it easier to buy shares based on the amount of money that I want to spend rather than how many shares that I want. So to do this, I need to go into a stock. Let's take 3M. So I've gone into 3M, I click buy, and at the top there it says number of shares. If I click that, I can change it to value. So now I'm in value. All I, what I can do is I can type in 100. It tells me that with 100 pound, it will buy me 0.8 shares. And I'll tell you what, that's gonna make it even faster and probably a bit easier to do than it already was. Trading212 are also about to release a beta for a feature that is going to be pretty revolutionary in this country and one that we've been waiting for for a long time. They finally announced it on their community forum that they're going to release their Pies and Auto Invest feature. This is gonna be a bit of a game changer really because it's gonna allow people to separate out their stocks into different sectors, see how each sector's performing. And then in those sectors, you're also going to be able to allocate on a percentage basis how much each stock gets in your portfolio. Then when I've got a new deposit in my account, so let's say I've deposited something or I've got new dividends coming in, Trader212 says that it will automatically allocate your money to the investments that you would prefer. There's no set date on when they're releasing this beta, there is a link on the community forum where you can sign up, but Trading212 has actually confirmed that they haven't even uploaded the update yet. So we're not entirely sure how quickly that's coming. However, the biggest thing that they have confirmed is it's gonna be completely free. That really surprised me. I did kind of think that was gonna be behind a paywall because it's quite a big feature, but no, they're sticking with free. I'm well up for that, cheers. There's been a ton of stock market news this week. It would take me forever to go through it all. So I just wanna go through a couple of my favorites. The first big bit of news was that Jerome Powell has said that the Federal Reserve is not out of ammo by a long shot. It pretty much means that the full on depression that everyone was worried about, that's pretty much off the table now and we only have to worry about a recession. But it's good news and it might mean that the big smart money might get back involved and it means that second crash might not come for a little while now. Also news came out that most US REITs were getting 90% of their rent still paid. Pretty much every rent still getting paid except for shopping centers. Realty income, which is my favorite, has seen a 15% drop in rents. That's because it owns a few gyms and things like that. And this news also passes over to UK REITs. Tritax Big Box is pretty much seeing all of its rents coming in and that big one from Amazon. I think Segro is doing pretty well as well. And the other reason why the stock market might have rallied this week is that Moderna and AstraZeneca are fighting it out to get the most vaccine out there. AstraZeneca, the week after I sold them. First, no one's actually that close to a vaccine yet. At this point, we're literally just testing if something that you can inject into the body is actually safe for humans. But what I didn't realize was that you could make deals on a vaccine that doesn't even exist yet. That's exactly what AstraZeneca has done this week, earning a billion dollars from America to make sure that America gets priority access to the vaccine if it's ever created. Another fun fact about AstraZeneca is that it actually owns 7.7% .7 of Moderna. So either way, AstraZeneca is probably going to benefit from the vaccine, even if it doesn't invent it. Right, let's take a look through my portfolio today. I realize I haven't really shown it that much recently. As you can see, I'm 2.6% up this morning. I imagine that's gonna take a bit of a hit at 2.30 because the American markets doesn't look good. 
with this war it's trying to have with China. Um, I don't understand at the minute. Scrolling down, everything seems to be exactly where I thought it would be right now. I still think that BAE Systems is very undervalued. It's had news recently from Saudi Arabia that because the Saudi Arabian oil prices are so low, Saudi Arabia are going to be reluctant to buy any new weapons. Saudi Arabia is BAE's biggest client, so that could harm them. Hikma Pharmaceuticals is one of my favorite stocks. I just wish I bought more earlier because this stock is going brilliantly and I can't seem to pinpoint exactly why. Yes, I know it makes generic medical products, but I can't figure out which one's the one that's selling at the moment. The Invesco ETF is trailing behind the market at the moment. I'm seriously reconsidering it. I've taken a look at its top five again. I'm concerned that its top five are actually just high dividend yielders and not actual safe and low volatility companies. The companies at the top there do seem to be holding on to their dividend through cash and through debt alone. I don't really like Iron Mountain anymore. I don't even really like Ventas. So I'm gonna have a really good think about that. I'm thinking I might wait till it recovers and then put that money back into different investments. For now it's staying, but I'm not 100% sure on that ETF now. Looking down the line, we've still got our standard ones in. Everything's doing pretty much as I'd expect it to. Rio Tinto's getting healthy again, that's pretty good. That's all because China's opened up. However, there's been a little bit of news today about them getting in a fight with Australia over iron. That's brought the price down a little bit, but I'm sure it's just a little blip in the road. Shell is still in its slump and it's probably going to be there for a long time. Oil prices slumped about 6% today, so it's having another rough day. It's had a lot of bad press this week with Iraqi oil workers revolting in Baghdad. And it's also talking about making a few of its staff redundant. Overall though, I still believe in Shell in the long term and that's why it's gonna stay. And that's why I've just gotta sit with it for years if I have to. However, there is an argument that I'm simply buying into this stock just because it's cheap. If I am buying into it just because it's cheap and it is going to fail, then that makes it a value trap, which is a nice smooth segue into today's topic. Value traps are stocks that are trading at such low levels at the moment that their share price looks appealing. But really what's going on inside is a little bit misleading. Value traps are considered as bad investments because while you're buying cheap, actually inside the company isn't doing very well or it's made some decisions that are really gonna slow its growth down. On a normal day, a value trap could present itself in all sorts of different ways. For instance, a company could have a very low share price, but a very high dividend yield. This dividend yield is being propped up with this company's own cash or with debt, to an investor that hasn't done their homework, this dividend yield might look pretty good. But in reality, all they're really buying is a cheap stock and that's not gonna do well for them. In this crisis, value traps are hiding behind everyone else's low value. So because the entire market is down, those value traps are also down with it, making them appear more valuable than they actually are. And a few of them have been popping up in the comments and also in the Discord group. Almost all of the airlines right now are value traps in one way or another. Those guys have had to take out big ass loans and they still don't know if they're going to survive. EasyJet's still got a lot of cash behind it. It's not likely to go bust, but the growth that it's gonna see after this crisis ends is not gonna be any good. They're simply gonna to need to pay off loans, pay off refunds, all sorts of things like that to get themselves off the ground again. So while you probably will see their price recover quite quickly, after that, there's probably going to be no growth whatsoever. Carnival is one of the big ones that everyone on YouTube has been banging on about. And to be honest, pre-crash, they were a pretty solid company. And arguably, yeah, they still are. They've got lots of cash behind them, they're starting to open up, things are starting to look good, but they've had a pretty shit time. And to survive, the Federal Reserve has bought some bonds off them. But those bonds are a loan at an 11% rate. Whereas before the crash, they probably would have got that loan at maybe 1%. This means that when they recover, and they probably will, that they're going to owe the US government a massive loan at 11%. This is going to massively slow their growth down and will likely leave it without a dividend for maybe 10 years. Again, I think a lot of people will make a good quick buck when it rises when it starts opening again. But after that, long term, its prospects are not looking good anymore. But for me, the biggest one out there and the one that's popping up so often is Aston Martin. Aston Martin is currently 95% down on the year, making it super cheap. There are so many people out there looking like it's the best opportunity out there, simply because it's cheap. Aston Martin has an amazing legacy. 
I'm super nostalgic about Aston Martin. Love the DB cars. And who doesn't love James Bond, right? And there's a new movie coming out soon, so that's gonna sell loads of Aston Martins. Lovely ideas for why that share price is gonna recover. But let's take a look at what Aston Martin actually is as a company. On Trading 212, you can only see three years of revenue. And even that doesn't look good. If you look back at their EPS even further, you'll actually find that only in 2017 did it make a profit. The rest of the years, it hasn't even been breaking even. That's a massive warning sign. Aston Martin is also desperately running out of cash. If you look at the cash and short-term investments panel, in 2017, it's 174, 2018, 144, and 2019, 80 million. That's all it's got left. It's a real shame, but Aston Martin is starting to look like it's on its way out. Okay, it does have some positive things. The fact that Aston Martin is a massive legacy will mean that someone out there will want to buy it. There will be some nostalgic angel investor who swoops in and saves it and maybe makes a big deal about it, but they're most likely to just cherry pick the favorite bits and make it into a much smaller company than what it is. Either way, it's going to be trading at a lot lower price than it was before the crash. And I'm sorry, but they make a new James Bond movie pretty much every three years and it's never saved it. So I don't see why another one is gonna change anything. You're basically just smashing your head against the same brick wall. So Aston Martin for me right now is one of the biggest value traps out there. It's at such a cheap price, but you're pretty much now buying a cheap company. It doesn't have the same premium quality that it used to. And when you're buying cheap companies that aren't innovating and aren't really relevant for the future, you're just not gonna go anywhere, which is why I wouldn't be going near Aston Martin anytime soon. But then again, I'm not a financial advisor. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing in the market. They might really rally. They might have the best bomb movie that's ever come out and everyone all of a sudden wants to drive an Aston Martin, maybe. It's not for me though. Thank you very much for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and subscribe. The app that I use for investing is Trading212. There is a link in the description below. If you sign up through that link and make a deposit, you get a free share and one of my subscribers gets a free share too. We also have a Discord group where loads of people are chatting in it. There's people on there that are a lot smarter than me and they know what they're doing. If you have any questions about markets or trading 212 or any stocks for that matter, there are lots of people on there willing to help you. Thank you very much for watching. I should have a new video out at some point next week, but until then, just like, subscribe and invest. Mm -hmm.